you think we're ready to start? I am ready whenever you are. All right. So just a reminder to those who just joined, this webinar is being recorded. So if you say something or comment something, then you, your voice will be on the recording. And you are free to interrupt us at any time in the presentation. And we encourage you to ask questions now when you have some great experts present. And today we have Derek Redhans as our guest, one of the core developers of Xdebug. And the topic today is how to use Xdebug to profile PHP. This is a very developer-oriented webinar. And I assume most of you are developers and at least know what PHP is. And uh, first, Derek will present himself a little bit more. and tell about Xdebug. And after that, I will follow with telling uh, how to use Xdebug in Cerevos environment, why we like Xdebug, and do a de quick demo on how to do profiling. All right. So are you ready, Derek, be my guest? You need to unpresent before I can present. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there we go. Is this all visible? Yep. My, my nice purple screen. Hello this afternoon. I'm Derek. As, um, as introduced, I'm one of the developers on Xdebug. Mm -hmm. Primarily the primary developer. I get a little bit of help, but not very much. And I've been asked to uh, introduce Xdebug a little bit. Well, after I'm done, there will be a demo for the profiling, so so I will skip over that. But what I'd like to do is introduce a few things that Xdebug gives you uh, beyond the profiling as well. So. Just installing Xdebug modifies PHP's uh, Vardom function instead of it being a mumbled mess where you have to uh, add pretext around it to actually expand that for you. And it has some additions to this as well. For example, it has a file uh, file name and line number where the Vardom was being called from. And you can well maybe just about see that I can actually hover over this. And in the bottom left of my screen, uh, it would, if I actually click on this link, it would actually open directly into my IDE, which is a kind of neat feature to have. Um, but this is the standard things that comes with Xdebug when you just install it, and for free, you don't have to do anything about that. However, this is useful. I mean, it makes your Vardams prettier, and I know that many uh, frameworks and WordPress they have their own Vardam, um, uh, how do you call them, Vardam wrappers to do something similar. Um, but Xdebug was first, so I still think I should talk about that. And it's been uh, been there for about 17 years now. Now, the, the pretty printing that I saw on the previous slide, you can actually configure quite a bit. So I mentioned already that there's this Xdebug link here that you can set a format to, but you can also control how many uh, data elements you get, how long the strings are going to be, and so on. So it is kind of more configurable than what PHP's normal var dump is. Again, as I said, quite a basic feature. Uh, the more important things are things like function traces. In the last two or three weeks or something, I was tasked by finding out how Drupal, for example, does logging. And I don't know anything about Drupal whatsoever. So I went a bit on a journey to find these things out. And particularly, I was interested in seeing which methods were being called. So Xdebug has a tracing feature. Uh, you can turn this on either in your PHP INI file or by using a browser extension. Um, um, and when that feature is turned on, it will actually create a file on disk, uh, a trace file, as I call these, that lists every single function call that is being made, its location, the par parameters, 
but also all the variable assignments and return types. And this gives so much information that you can quite easily grab through by using a text editor. I, I'm a fan of Vim. I'm sure you have your own favorites here. But it, it basically tells you exactly what happened all through the execution of your script, which can sometimes be a very nice way of finding out what exactly goes on and exact methods that are being called and so on and so on. So I find as always, especially when I don't know a code base, like I don't know Drupal or WordPress either, <laughs> um, very good way of trying to find out what goes on. Now, beyond the function traces, there's the profiling. I won't go really much into that because uh, Otto is going to give a, um, a demo of that. Um, but the profile allows you to do is pretty much find out which function takes up a lot of time. As I said, we'll wait for Otto to do the uh, to do the demo on this one. Typically, um, with PHP units, uh, PHP units is a, a way of making sure that you can test different parts of your code. And sometimes it is really useful to find out which parts of your code actually have been covered while running the tests. So. As a side project to PHP unit, there's something called PHP code coverage, as you can see the links in the bottom here. And in combination with Xdebug, it allows you to create this code coverage output. It's basically what this does. It, it tries to analyze exactly which lines of code have been run. Now, you don't have to do this with PHP unit at all. Uh, PHP code coverage, you can use standalone. And if you have written your own testing framework or your own testing tools, maybe, then integrating PHP code coverage and that actually provides you information like this. So I can actually click on these links, so I will. So in this case, uh, what actually was run, the testing thing that was run was actually PHP unit itself. As you can see here in my, in my top, I've set up a set of benchmarks. Um, I'll get back to what I mean by that or why I have done that later. But you can click on the folders and you can then see per method, for example, or per file, uh, what was being executed. And I'm not sure why my scroll bar is gone, but. Um, but you can see if for every thing in here, uh, how, yeah, how, which lines have been covered and how, sorry, you can see which lines have been covered by and seeing which test has covered that line and stuff like that. So if you're trying to write a comprehensive testing suite for your application, or maybe only for a specific action or a plugin that you're developing is a very nice way to finding out where you still need to write tests because the tests haven't been covered uh, by tests that you have already written. So that's what code coverage does. Um, probably the biggest feature that most people use is uh, the step debugger, or sometimes also called the remote debugger or something like that. What the step debugger allows you to do is analyze the script while it is running. So the way how this works is that you enable this next debug, you start your IDE, you put your IDE in listening mode, and then you request uh, your, your application. In this case, it's the homepage of xdebug.org. Um, when xdebug sees a specific cookie, it will then connect to the IDE by making a debugging connection, and then in the IDE, you can use buttons like, um, I'm, I'm pointing my mouse pointer then in case you didn't notice. There's things like step over and step in, allows you to step through your code and at every step, look at all the different variables that are being set, which you can see here in the bottom right pane. Uh, at the moment, I only have a screenshot because I mean 15 minutes or 20 minutes isn't long enough to do a full fetch demo. Uh, but I, I have made some videos about that, which I can point to you later in the resources, or we'll send it out after the webinar is over. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, I've been doing lots of in, uh, lots of checking with Drupal because I didn't know that. And having the function traces is really lovely to have because it gives you a good overview, a bit of, a bit of the structure. But if you really want to find out where, why specific things happening, or why specific things happen in, in a way that you don't expect it to do because maybe a variable isn't set or something like that. Having a step debugger to go through your code line by line, inspecting the variables is so useful and it saves so much time. 
Now, it is sometimes a little bit tricky to set up, but I'm working on that, improving that for an upcoming version of XDBook, XDBook 3. But more about that in a moment. Now, XDBook is kind of old software. Uh, it is 17 years old, and it has plenty of issues. You probably know that any application that you have written 17 years ago, if you look at that code right now, you're probably asking yourself, who wrote this, and why is this so bad? And then when you look at it, you actually find out that it was yourself. Well, XDBook is a little bit like that as well. XDBook code base is old. It has so many configuration options that I can't really always remember. There's also some issues in there that um, due to the things over the years, uh, there is, due to feature creep, a uh, lot of bad performance in it when it was loaded. And um, XDBook wasn't always up to date with PHP's versions either. Now, about a year and a half ago, I decided, well, enough is enough. I need to get fixed. I need to get this sorted. So I sort of started working on XDBook uh, half of my time with Saravo helping me out, sponsoring me uh, to work a little bit uh, as well, which is I'm very thankful for. But at sorry, at the goal, it was there to to make XDBook better, to make it better perform, as well as make it a lot more easier to use. So I won't go through all these points here because we're not going to have enough time for it. But uh, in XDBook 2.9, I've already started making quite a lot of performance improvements. Um, a little bit about the code coverage that, uh, that I just showed you there. But um, the idea is that XDBook 3 is going to do a lot more. So I've been starting to refactor with this. Uh, I'm introducing some modes. I'll explain those in a moment and also working on a, in performance improvements. Now, to have a bit of a, a look at what is this. Um, so XDBook 2.7 is fairly old version. It's about maybe a year old or so. And running uh, code coverage from specific package, does that a component document package? It doesn't particularly matter which one it is. Took two, two to eight minutes or so, which is, well, it's all right. It's not too fast, not too slow. Uh, but then I uh, released XDBook 2.8, and it took 60, sorry, 46 minutes, which is a bit longer than you want to walk for that. And um, managed to cut it down into 8 to 22 minutes, which is great. And then I started talking to some of the other PHP core developers, and they gave me some good hints. And they suggested, well, maybe you should do it this way. And I implemented it. It took maybe half a day or so. And then uh, we ended up getting it down to one or two minutes. So also, it's going to show you profiling of PHP applications of WordPress, I use the exact same techniques to look at what things I can improve in XDBook itself, which is sort of a XDBook inception kind of concept, right? And this work has been continuing over the last year. So, and that is going to accumulate in XDBook 3, which I hope to have out by the end of the year together with PHP 8, although it will also support PHP 7 to, to PHP 8, but not before 7 to anymore, sorry. And the big difference in there is that in XDBook 2, all the features are always enabled, even if you're not using that, meaning that uh, it will always have hooks for the profiler, for the debugger, for code coverage. And if you don't, know, don't need these things, then you end up wasting quite a lot of time, right? So what XDBook 3 allows you to do is load it, but also turn off all the features, which means that yeah, there's almost no overhead. And then Per option, you can turn these things on. So the base, which is the Vardom that I've been showing you, there's a debugger, which is a step debugger, which I'm also renaming to less confusing name and so on and so on. And I want to make this all better um, to, to make it go fast and make it easier for you as users to actually use. Uh, the profiler uh, is also a mode. Coverage is a mode and something that is in very early stages of development is something called I call the time traveler mode, where the step debugger allows you to only step forward. You cannot step backwards. What I want to do with my time traveler mode is that um, you can also step backwards in your PHP code. Well, that doesn't mean that it gets re-executed, but it can be a really nice way sometimes that if you have delivered an application to uh, say one of your customers, if, if that's what you do. Uh, you can actually ask them to enable this time traveler mode. This will create a file that they can ship to you. And that allows you then to basically seek through 
the whole execution of your application or your script to see what's going on in inspector variables. So I'm looking forward to working on that. I haven't had the time for that yet, but I think it'd be a nice addition, especially if you uh, create applications that are being used by customers and that they run their, on their own. Um, sometimes setting up the debugging is a little bit tricky. Um, especially when you get things like Docker and Vagrant in the way. Um, I don't exactly know how Cerevo's Vagrant uh, images do that. Um, but in some cases, the debugging can be complicated due to network uh, situations. So I've been working as a bit of a side project on something called Xdebug Cloud to make that aspect a lot easier as well. So this was a very, very brief overview of all the features in Xdebug that it already has and what I'm trying to do for Xdebug 3 to make things go faster. Uh, if there's any questions, I am more than happy to answer them. I can't hear anybody though. I shall uh, change to my video of myself and then we can do questions. Are there any questions? None at all. Maybe you have some, Otto. All right. Thanks. The time traveler seems like a really cool feature. Yeah, it's going to take me a lot of time to to build that as well. But uh, it would be cool to have at some point. Yeah. Right. Any questions? <laughs> When do you think you'll have the time traveler feature ready? That is going to take some time. I doubt by the end of the year. Uh, it is pretty much, it is a accumulation or it's something that meshes the function tracing and the debugger together in one kind of thing. And that's going to take quite a lot of time. I can't really give you an estimate of that yet. Um, if you uh, follow Xdebug on Twitter, it's at Xdebug, I am sure I'll keep you all up to date about what goes on there. All right, maybe I missed it, but how will the cloud solution work? So the ID currently is that if Xdebug needs to make a connection to the IDE, it needs to know the exact IP address on what the IDE is listening on. And in some cases, that is really hard to do, especially when you have Dockers with complicated networks set up and things like that. So what Xebra Cloud is going to allow you to do is that instead of Xebra connecting to the IDE directly, what it will do is it will connect to a cloud instance, uh, maybe running on AWS. I haven't quite figured it out yet. And the ID also connects to that same instance. And because it's just both connecting to an external IP without having to know each other's uh, addresses, it basically proxies through there. Uh, and that should make the, the debugging setup a whole lot easier. Um, uh, should, so the question is, uh, will it affect loading times, et cetera? Well, um, well yes and no. Uh, I mean, a connection that goes through the public internet is going to be slower than one that you have on your local network. But as long as you have a reasonable connection out, I don't think that should be much of a problem. Uh, the loading times um, is something that I'm working on in XDBook 3 very much already anyway. and I, I, I have done some benchmarks recently that's showing that it actually is significantly faster. And that also means that it should be a lot less of a problem to always have Xdebug loaded, for example. And especially when you set the right mode, that should be all, uh, yeah, should work a lot better than Xdebug too. All right. If you have more questions, there's a Another opportunity also to ask them later. Now I'm going to take over and show some of the basics and do a demo on profiling.
All right. So most of you here today are familiar names, but in case you don't know Seravo from before, a short word on that. So we are a premium hosting and upkeep company for WordPress. So our background is in Linux server management and, and maintenance. And when we had lots of customers asking us to maintain their WordPress sites, we decided to turn it into a service where you get the upkeep and obviously also hosting for a fixed fee every month. And the reason why we also do the hosting is that it would be impossible for us to do high quality upkeep and maintenance if the, if the site was running on some third party environment. And uh, this environment we have is, is, a, is the best possible WordPress environment. We are running Nginx as our servers. We have always the latest PHP versions. We have Redis available, ReadyB as the server, and obviously all the developer tools like VPCLI and, and stuff. And uh, performance is something we care a lot about. And if you didn't know, Google employees have published this website ismyhostfastyet.com and it's based on the Chrome telemetry data. So when you're using the Chrome browser, it's sending some statistics to Google servers about what sites you are visiting and how long it takes for those sites to load on different metrics. And Google employees have used that database to publish a site where they compare different hosting companies. And in that benchmark, Seravo is the fastest WordPress hosting company in the world. We're not the fastest hosting company. There are some static website services that are faster than Seravo, but we are the fastest dynamic and thus also the fastest WordPress hosting company in that benchmark. And since we care about performance, then obviously Xdebug is close to our heart. As you heard from Derek, we are sponsoring the Xdebug project or we are one of the sponsors and we like it a lot and we recommend it to everybody. It's open source, so it's, you can use it freely and you can also participate in the development. And I'm sure Derek would be ha happy about new contributors. Xdebug is pretty old and famous and embraced by the PHP community. So it works well with, with all PHP versions and all the tooling around that. It has plenty of features as you already saw like profiling and rich stack traces and a debugger and stuff it probably has so many features that mo most people don't even know how much features it has it's uh, since it's old it's included in in all major linux distributions and it's quite easy to install and it's comes pre-installed for example in the vvv environment which WordPress core contributors use and it's also pre-installed in the Vagrant and Docker development environments Seravo offers for its customers. So it's a great way for anybody who is doing PHP development to find out what their code is doing. You can use it to find out what your code is doing in general and you can especially use it to find bottlenecks and uh, you can use Xdebug for the profiling itself. And then you need some tool to, to be able to browse the profiling logs. And for that, our environment ships WebGrind. And then if you want to do a graph like this, which shows all the functions and how the calls go to other functions, then you can use that. You, you can use gprof to dot and dot to make a visualization. And it's actually quite easy to use. So all WordPress site developers who are writing PHP code should definitely also learn debug. And I'm going to show you a little demo soon how easy it is. So basically, if you're using the WordPress environment provided by Seravo and you're a Seravo customer, you can just go in with into the environment and from the command line write vp-xdebugger-on to enable it. It's not running by default because it makes the site uh, somewhat slower. 
so you have to put it on specifically and then you can browse any website or any address in the local development environment and just by appending this simple get par parameter xdebug underscore profile it will automatically then trigger a profiling of that address and then the profile will show up in a temp directory and then you can go to the pre-installed web grind to browse it and all of, all of this is also available in our documentation which is here and all our presentations will also be posted online after this webinar so you can check it out So oh, a quick demo. I have here a local development environment running. This is an empty site, so the address is just wordpress.local. Looks like this. Nothing special. And then here I have SSH into the local development environment. And to enable xdebug, I need to run vp-xdebug. And it's enough actually just to write vp-x and press the tab button so it autocompletes. And then enter. And then it's active. And then I can go here. Now, if I load this site, you will notice that it's slightly slower, but not that much. And then I take this get parameter and then just simply append it here like this and press enter. It was also slightly slower now, but not much that you would notice. Then I go to this address just from the domain root, I add dash dot servo dash web grind and then I'll get this UI and then from this UI I typically select that I you don't want to show a hundred percent of the PHP functions because that would be way too much but I usually select like 99 or 98 and then here you can show the values in percent percentages or in milliseconds or microseconds, I and I like to use this milliseconds. And in this drop down, you can see all the all the profiling files that have been generated. So each page load that is uh, profiled generates one file. Now I have this one file open here, and you can see this UI. Let's zoom in a little bit. So how do you read this table? Here is the function name in this column. And then in this column, you can see how many times those functions have been called. And this is the main function. This is where the execution starts. So obviously, it has been called only one time. But I can sort this, and I can see that the apply filter function has been called over 5,000 times during this page load. And we have the total self cost column, which I can sort like this. And this tells how much time has been spent inside that function. And then we have total inclusive cost, which tells how much time has been spent in, inside that function and all its children. And the most important column is this total self cost. So you can see what are the slowest functions. And on this side, there are no major problems. So all of these values are quite small. But if you find something here which is slow, then you can, for example, if I want to find out what is calling this function, I simply click it. And then it will show all the 
functions that are calling this one. So these are all translation translation functions. So that explains why it's frequently called. And here you can keep on drilling down functions that this function is calling. Every time you click it, it goes onwards. And you can click here called from to go upwards to see from what function that was called. So this way you can dig what is doing what. And then we have this nifty little icon here, some black and red lines. So when you click this, it will directly jump in that local code base to that exact line where this function was called. So here you can then in context see what is this code doing. And here you can do searches. You can, for example, check if this page is doing any curls or for example, database queries. BPDB, you can see all the database queries going on. Then we have here show call graph. And by pressing this button, you get this nifty visualization of what functions were called. So it again starts with main, which is the where execution, execution starts. And then it this is basically the start of index PHP. And then it calls VP blog header require. And that then calls require VP load and also require template loader. And then you can see how the execution goes here. So even if you don't have a performance bottleneck, then this is a pretty good way to learn what the code base is doing overall. You can zoom out to get bird's eye view. And these colors here indicate how much time was spent inside that function. And then you also have here on these lines, you have the number of calls that was made. So that was very easy. Just put xdebug on and then add that get parameter and then go to web grind to browse the results. So typical issues, what you can find from the profiling results is that uh, you have some code that is doing too many function calls or the call or a single call, it just takes a lot of time. And the typical problem is database queries, you have just too many database queries going on on a single page load, or then the database query is fetching too much information. And the typical problem is that some plugins like have some custom post types, and then on every page load, it, for example, loads all of those post types from the database and then does some processing in PHP. And when the database grows, then it gets slower and slower over time. And a simple solution to that is, or a simple principle is that you should always only load the database content that your view actually needs to show. So in terms of SQL, you need to remember to use a limit clause, or when you're using from WordPress the VP query, then remember to limit how many posts per page is fetched as, at once. And here is an example of queries to be able to show one page. And if your site, when you're profiling your site and you notice that VPML is the source to slowness, then the solution is to, for example, to switch to Polylang, which is much faster and more efficient. Then another typical cause of slowness is that your PHP code is doing external HTTP queries. For example, if you have some social media 
plugin. If it's stupid, it might be doing, let's say, uh, network calls to, to the Facebook API server, for example. And if it does this on every single page load, then your site performance or the speed, how quickly your page loads will always be limited by how long it takes for the Facebook API server to reply. And the way to find this is if you find this curl exec functions in your code. And here is an example of how it can look like. And uh, the solution is that mo most of the time you should wrap this is in a transient so that you're not doing network calls on every single page load. If you think about the use case of social media, you're probably not getting new posts every second. Maybe it would be enough to fetch your social media feed, let's say, every 10 minutes or so. So then you could, instead of getting it on every page load, you could store it in a 10 minute transient and then use the cache data, cache data for a while. Here is an example that there was this plugin that was doing lead, connect, lead collection and it was making remote network calls on every single page load to get this uh, JSON file which had some settings inside it. And the settings were not changing all the time, so this was unnecessary. So this site was optimized by wrapping this API call into a transient. And the transient is something that's built in into WordPress. It's a very simple key value store for data that is like a type of cache that is, as the name says, transient, which means that it might be deleted at any time. And the API is very simple. You have a get transient and then you give it the name of the item you want to get from the transient store. And then you have a set transient where you give a name to the item you're saving, then the contents of the item, and then an expiry time. And in this example, we are storing the result from this network call for one hour. And then this is wrapped in an if clause. So if you have this data in the transient database, then it gets used and there's no network call and only when the data has expired or been deleted, then the network call will actually happen. There's more about transients on our website. And here is also a link to the WordPress developer handbook on transients. So if you are not, if you haven't used transients ever before, so I warmly recommend to learn those. All right. And here is an extra tool available in our environment. So if you just want to do quick checks on certain pages, how quickly they are loading. For example, if you want to do some experiments changing your code and see before and after if it got faster or not. So you can run this VP speed test command. It looks like this. And you can give an address as a parameter. And if you don't give any address, then it's checking the front page by default. And then it shows you the average loading time. And related to VP query, you can utilize this to find random slowness. So sometimes when you have a website, you notice that it's randomly slow. And when you're profiling the page, it doesn't necessarily show up anything special. So my trick here is to load this page in VP speed test, but also give the get parameter xdebug profile to the URL. So then there will be many consecutive profiling to the same address. And then you can see in the loading times that randomly one of these calls was much slower than it usually is. And if you see this, then it means that you managed to catch the slowness in your profile. And then when you go to web grind, you just simply compare how big the profile files are and then the biggest profile profiling result is usually the one that has the slowest events inside. So then you can click that and then dig into what was happening on this rare occasion. Maybe some, uh, some uh, event that is 
scheduled to happen only now, now and then. And this, I always like to stress that when you're doing performance optimization, always remember to measure before and after. And don't just assume that some change works or is an improvement. Sometimes there can be surprising uh, surprising effects to your changes and something you thought makes your site faster actually made it slower somewhere else. So always measure before and after and validate your results. Right, and you can find more documentation on how to use our development environment and the tools we have available at cerebo.com dash docs. And we have also plenty of presentations on this topic in our blog and on our YouTube channel because we are kind of obsessed with performance. And here are some more. And as said, we will be publishing our slides afterwards. All right, thanks. Now we have some time to do more questions. May I start with one? Sure. You showed web grind. Have you also used K cache grind with the same profiling files before? Uh, no, I I use this. Uh, I prefer web grind because it's browser based, and it's very simple to use. But obviously, you can use K cache grind or whatever tool you want. You just get the profiling files. You download it to your local machine and then open it. Do you? Does this question imply that K Cache grind would have some extra features that I might like. It has similar features. I just find it a little bit easier to jump around in places sometimes yeah. because it allows you to click on all the nodes in the tree and it jumps to the right ones. If, if you want to try out K cache grind, then just remember that. Here in the temp file, temp directory are the profiling files themselves. So you can take them from there and then feed them to any application that's, that uh, is compatible with this profiling format. And this is not just PHP specific. This is the same profiling format used in many other programming languages as well. It's kind of a standard format for profile data. Thanks. All right. Do you have other questions? Or do you have questions to Derek? Happy to answer more. Or some comments. How many of you have tried Xdebug before? How many was Xdebug a completely new thing? Can you raise your hand in the chat as well? Yep. No. Emojis. Emojis, I see. What Mickey, tool would... Mickey, Sorry, shall... What tool would you choose to make a quick remote profile? If it's remote, uh, as long as WebGrind is installed, that is probably the easy way to do it. Um, but if you, ah, OK, I see what you mean. You don't often have access to XDBook on production. No, that's true. And that makes it kind of tricky to like a remote profile there. So for for the people for that have like a, a larger like hosting setup, what I've often seen what people do is they have two PHP FPM pools. But you can do the same with Nginx, it doesn't particularly matter. Where one of them has Xdebug enabled and the other one doesn't. And depending on an IP address or another cookie that they send, it gets routed to that specific web server configuration, which then does the profile. So that allows you to have Xdebug running in production, but not for everybody uh, that visits your website. It's just a single single pool that gets triggered based on IP address and cookies so that you can still use these profiles and still can make profiles. 
And usually you can just make a new shadow of your production environment and then in the shadow environment run xdebug because you still have the same code and the same database in the shadow environment. So you should get the same results. But as I said, xdebug currently is too slow for to be enabled in production as such. Maybe that will change with xdebug version 3. And currently at Ceravo, if you want to do profiling in production, you probably also want to have a component that is storing lots of this profiling files for a longer time and showing you historic data as well. And for that use case, we recommend Tideways. And here is more information about Tideways and our previous webinar in June was about Tideways. So you can go check up that recording if you're interested about that. But Tideways is not open source. Xdebug is open source and something you can use anywhere, anytime. Yep, it's open source and free. All right, any more questions or comments? If you want to send them to me afterwards, that's fine too. Uh, I'm sure we can publish an email address or... Always happy to answer questions. How many people was X debug something completely new? Yeah, I, um, I would just like to thank you, Derek, for your hard work because I've been a fan of X debug for, uh, well, about maybe eight years now, but just the step debugger. So I joined this to kind of, I've never really used the profile that much, but just debugging my code. And I always try to get my team to uh, install it. It's kind of a hurdle because it is confusing and like for someone who hasn't done it, but, mm. but, um, but it's always like when once someone, it, I always see that when someone really s gets it to work on their system with their ID, we use a lot of PH PHP Storm, uh, and uh, it's just amazing how much it it like really opens your eyes to like to your code base. So, so thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, and and I realize it is sometimes hard to set up, but it's something that I've been working on and. And making it easier to find problems with setups as well. Uh, not sure whether you've seen, but I, I added like a an information page. It's basically PHP info, but called Xdebug yes. info. Yes. That shows that shows you all kinds of diagnostics and how debugging, whether it works or what, what didn't work when it was trying to do it and stuff like that. So, hopefully with that, with in with improvements like that, it should be easier for people to get going. And then at the same time, I've been working a little bit with uh, Matt Stauffer from, which does lots of Laravel things. Also, uh, yeah, to make some tutorial videos to see, to set it up and things like that. So I, I will be working more on that kind of things as well. Cool. All right. Thanks everybody for attending. What, what do you say in Finland? Is it kietos? My pronunciation is going to be rubbish, but... <laughs> That's very good. Kietos. <laughs> kietos. Or what is it in Swedish? Taksimikke? Tak, tak. Tak, tak, yeah. Very good. All right. So follow our website to learn about our next webinar. It's probably going to be about how to do search in WordPress All right. in September. So keep an eye on our blogs. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Th thanks for having me, Elsa. Bye-bye. Thanks for attending. <laughs>